This is lesson 6.6, .6, geometric sequences. You should be on page 332 of your textbook. In this lesson, you will learn how to identify a geometric sequence, how to extend and graph a geometric sequence, and then how to write a geometric sequence as a function. So before we begin, we have to know what the heck is a geometric sequence. So a geometric sequence is a sequence where the ratio between each pair of consecutive terms is the same. So if you're like, uh, what does that mean, okay? It's simply saying a geometric sequence is a sequence where we have a multiplication pattern. Now, the number you multiply by, like if you take a look here, they have a sample geometric sequence. Can you see that if we do 1 times 5, we get 5, and 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 125? This number that you constantly multiply by is called the common ratio. So that's what a geometric sequence is. It's a sequence of numbers that's created by a constant multiplication pattern. So the, one of the things you'll have to do in this lesson is be able to identify if a sequence is geometric or not. So in these sample problems, we're going to decide whether the sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Now let's review real quickly before we continue. What is an arithmetic sequence? We learned this earlier in the year. An arithmetic sequence has an addition or a subtraction pattern. So that's how arithmetic sequences are different than geometric. Geometric is a multiplication pattern. Arithmetic is an addition or subtraction pattern. So let's look at this first sample, A, and they give me a sequence. And this is clearly a geometric sequence for the following reason. 120 times a half would give me 60. 60 times a half is 30. And 30 times a half is 15. This is definitely geometric. I'm multiplying by a half each time. The common ratio is a half. Let's look at B. This is neither. Let's try and see if it's arithmetic first. It's neither. Here, 2 plus 4 is 6, but 6 plus 4 does not give me 11. So this is definitely not arithmetic. Let's see if it's geometric. Let's see if we can multiply. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 does not get me 11. This is not geometric either. This is neither. Okay? This sequence is neither geometric or arithmetic. What I'd like you to do real quick is try numbers 1, 2, 3, pause the video, and determine are these sequences listed arithmetic, geometric, or neither? Okay, we're back. So the first one is definitely an arithmetic sequence because 5 minus 4 is 1, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, and negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. The next sequence, geometric, 1,024 times an eighth is 128, 128 times an eighth is 16, and 16 times an eighth is 2. Definitely geometric. It's a multiplication pattern. Number three is neither. Now, when you look carefully, it looks like it's arithmetic at first. Two plus four is six. Six plus four is ten. Here's the problem. Ten plus four does not give me sixteen. So it's not arithmetic. And let's try geometric. Two times three is six, but six times three is not ten. This is neither. Let's talk about how we extend and graph a geometric sequence. So extending geometric sequences should be easy. We just have to know the common ratio. It says, write the next three terms of each geometric sequence. So for this one, it looks like my ratio, my common ratio, is we're multiplying by 2 each time. 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 times 2 is 24. So the next term, 24 times 2, should get me to 48. Uh, 48 times 2 is 96, and 96 times 2 is 192. Should be easy to extend the sequence. B, okay, I have a geometric sequence here. 
64 times negative quarter gets me negative 16. Negative 16 times negative quarter gives me positive 4. And positive 4 times negative quarter gets me negative 1. So let's get the next term. Negative 1 times negative 4 would be positive quarter. Positive quarter times negative quarter would be negative 16th. And negative 16th times negative quarter would be positive 164th. And yes, you could use your calculator on these. This is definitely a calculator section of the book. Now let's talk about graphing a geometric sequence. That should be easy. We, we did something similar to this when we did arithmetic sequences. It says graph the geometric sequence 32, 16, 8, 4, 2. What do you notice? Well, to graph it, here's what you do. The first term, I'll put numbers. 32 is the first term, 16 is the second, 8 is the third term, 4 is the fourth term, and 5, I'm sorry, 2 I meant to say is the fifth term. Do you notice how they took this and they just made a table out of it? 1, 32, 2, 16, 3, 8, 4, 4, and 5, 2. Plot those points. Here's the point, 1, 32, and they plotted it. And then we have the point, 2, 16, and they plotted that and then 3, 8, and 4, 4, and 5, 2. What you should notice is if I was to try to connect these points, do you notice how it's giving me a exponential curve? This looks like decay, exponential decay graph. So if you're wondering why are they teaching this stuff in chapter 6, this chapter is on exponential equations and graphs. Geometric sequences are exponential. Okay, so that's why this lesson is in this chapter. You get exponential graphs out of geometric sequences. I would like you to pause the video, take graph paper. It says write the next three terms of the geometric sequence and then graph it. Go ahead and try number four. Okay, and we're back. And so let's get the next three terms of the sequence. The first thing is the common ratio. Did you notice 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. So the common ratio is 3. So 27 times 3 is 81. 81 times 3 is 243. And 243 times 3 is 729. So I took this and I went to graph paper and I made a table. And you can see I made the table there. Here's 139, 27, 81, 243, and 729. And I put the position. So these are the X's and these are the Y's. Now I just have to graph them. Uh, 1, 1 is way in the heck down here. By the way, just so you know, my X scale is 1's. My Y scale, I went 50 per interval. Okay? So 1, 1 would be way in the heck down here. 2, 3 is way down here. 3, 9 still does look like it's moved. Now, 4, 27 and 5, 81 and 6, 2, 43 would be about here because this is 250. And then we have 7 and 729, which would be about, mm, about there. And you can see how I have this exponential curve created which again is why this lesson is part of this uh, chapter on exponential um, situations, okay? Next, we need to know how we can look at a geometric sequence and write a function for it or write an equation for it. They try to explain the background of how they derive the equation, and I don't know that we need to talk about this. Um, when you, when you when you get into higher levels of math, if you want to figure out how they created the equation, I think it would be more important then. But for right now, this is what I need you to know. To write a ge an equation for a geometric sequence, they put, it looks really complicated, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. And you're like, what the heck? Okay, here's what all this means. I'm going to color code as I talk. The first term of the sequence is this. So whatever the first term of the sequence is, you put that number here. R stands for the common ratio. And then you see this n minus 1. The power is how many terms are left. Now you wrote the first term down. 
however many terms are left, that's your power. So if you're still not 100% sure what I'm saying, let's look at this example. I think this example would make it clear. Write an equation for the nth term of this, of this sequence. Okay? We want to find the nth term. So let's look. The first term of the sequence is a 2. So I plug that in here. First term's 2. Common ratio. You notice how we're multiplying by 6 every time. Okay? We're multiplying by 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 times 6 is 72. 72 times 6 is 432. So R is 6. Now, I want the 10th term. You already wrote one down. If you, if you want 10 terms and you already got the first one down, you need nine more. Because one down, we got nine more to go, so the power should be ninth power. So if you take 2 times 6 to the ninth power, let's do that on our calculator. So 2 times 6 raised to the ninth power. You see that we're getting what the book is saying for you there, okay? The answer to this is 20,155,392. Which is, is exactly what the book says it should be right here. Okay? So it should be easy for you to write an equation for a geometric sequence. What I would like you to do is pause the video and try 9 and 11 here. Try, I want you to write the equation for the geometric sequence and then find the seventh term using your formula. Okay, and I'm back. And so for number nine, here's the first thing. The first term, let me color code, first term is 13. Okay. Um, my common difference, I'm multiplying by two every time. That's my common difference. So I put the first term, 13, times the common difference, which is two. I want seven terms. Now, do you notice I wrote the first one down, so I need six power. I have six more terms to go, and that should be 832. And then for the next question, my first term is 4. My common difference, I'm multiplying by 2.5 each time. And I need seven terms, and I already have the first one written down, so I need six more to go. And there would be my answer, 976.5625. And to wrap things up, you can write the geometric sequence equation in function notation. Instead of using the little a sub n that they showed you on the previous page, we could replace that with f of n. You notice everything else is the same. So this is just saying you might see geometric sequences written in function notation. The domain is the set of positive integers because when you look at these, you know, it's the first term and so on. We're going to have positive integers for our x values for these questions. There are real life situations that pop up from geometric sequences like this one. Um, this map, you can zoom out on the map. And it says when you zoom out, every time you click, you can see here that the size of the map is doubling. The question is, how many clicks do I need to zoom out to 640 miles? Okay, so I want my equation to equal 640. Let's write an equation for this sequence. Now, I'm trying to figure out how many clicks that would be. So, y would equal my first term is 5, my common ratio is 2, and I have an unknown amount minus 1. I have so many more terms. I want to find out what that is. Now, this is where we can go back. We can use our calculator real quick, plug these both in, use the intersect feature on our calculator to find out how many clicks that would be. So let's do that now. So I can take and type both those equations in my calculator. y equals 640, that was my first equation, 
and y equals 5 times 2 raised to the x minus 1 power. That's my second equation, and you can see those right here. Next, remember, I can use the intersect feature that you learn in lesson number, in lesson 5, the last lesson we just did. So let's do that. Let's do second calc. I'm going to intersect, see where these two lines meet. And I'm going to press enter, 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 and there's my answer. It should take eight clicks to have a 640 mile um, range or width of my graph. So eight would be the answer. And that's matching what we have here. After eight clicks, the length of the mat is 640 miles. I'm going to pause my video there. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.